on India today. Piyush ji, welcome and wish you a very, very happy Independence Day. I want to start by talking about the Prime Minister's you, Independence Rahul. Day speech and the key themes he laid out. And somewhere in the middle of it all, it seemed that the Prime Minister and the BJP taking for a granted that they'll be back next year uh, at the Red Fort celebrating yet another Independence Day and assuming that the 2024 general elections are already won. Uh, thank you, Rahul, and wish you and all your viewers a very happy Independence Day. I think the Prime Minister today laid down the work that he has done, that his government has done over the last nine years. He also laid down the vision for India as we enter the Amrit Kal, the performance of the first year, and how we see India emerging as a global superpower in the next 25 years when we shall be celebrating India's centenary of independence in 2047. Very clearly, Prime Minister Narendra Modi is confident that the work that he has done, that the love and affection of the people of India, that the outstanding results, that the nine years mantras of reform, perform and transform have led to in terms of inclusive development, sustainable development, will surely give him another term to serve the people as the Pradhan Sevar. This reflects his confidence and trust in the people of India, just as the people of India have reposed their love and faith and trust on him time and again. Uh, Piyush ji, the Prime Minister's big promise, and he made this at your function at the new venue for the G20, the new ITPO, uh, is that India would be the third largest economy in the next few years. He is saying 2027. Some experts think it could be a bit longer. Your critics, however, say that is this a case of the government wanting to count its chickens before they hatch? Uh, because the promise of a $5 trillion economy by 2022 was met and we still are a, a $3.7 trillion economy. We haven't reached $5 trillion yet and therefore let's not celebrate it uh, and believe that it's already happened till it actually happens. You're being accused of using this projection as one of your key campaign promises for 2024. Rahul, uh, you will recall that at the Bharat Mandapam program, the Honorable Prime Minister had extensively dealt on economic issues, how the country is making rapid progress, and why he feels encouraged that India will become a developed economy by 2047. His vision is clear, the roadmap is there, the investments are falling into place, the results are very encouraging, and we have absolutely no doubt in our mind. Every projection, not only by the government, but, but by reputed investment bankers, by reputed investment banks around the world, by reputed economists around the world, suggests that this is India's time. It's our moment in, under the sun. We have a young population. We have talent. We have skills. We have the enabling infrastructure being set into place, put into place, both by the government and the private sector. We have huge amounts of resources coming in, both through internal savings and international investments. The macroeconomic parameters are all sound and robust. All of this lends us to be very confident about India's future. I'll just correct your perspective. The $5 trillion economy was uh, to be met by 2025. However, we are all aware that two years were lost due to the COVID situation and the Ukraine war that, over, that overcame circumstances soon after COVID. So I think one will have to factor that in and you will recognize that we are well on track both to achieve five trillion and to move forward towards a 30, 35 trillion dollar economy so that every section of society in India has a prosperous future. You're seeing your critics in the Congress 
uh, talk about the arithmetic inevitability, the likes of uh, P. Chidambaram, Jairam Ramesh saying that this is guaranteed over the next few years in any case, regardless of who forms the next government. How do you respond to this charge about the arithmetic inevitability India as a country because of the population size, because of what's happening globally in terms of declining and aging populations is bound to grow regardless of whether the Prime Minister and the BJP come back to power or not. How do you respond to this? Well, this is the despondency of the Congress speaking. I think it's uh, extremely unfortunate that a senior leader, a former finance minister has such petty thinking. This is a actually what has kept the country backward for so many years. The lost opportunities in 75 years of independence, a uh, large part of which was led by the Congress party, is reflective of the sorry state of affairs that we inherited in 2014. I'm sure a reader of the Indian economy uh, like you will recall the fragile five economy that we inherited. That was when Mr. Chidambaram was the finance minister when he had to borrow at exorbitant interest rates, FCNRB deposits even to shore up the rupee and maintain fiscal stability with depleting foreign exchange reserves. I think it is evident that the Congress is bereft of ideas. They don't even recognize that unless smart investments are made in infrastructure, they don't even recognize that the technology levels in the world are changing and we'll have to keep abreast with these changes. For example, artificial intelligence, machine learning, quantum computing, all of these are the areas of the future in which we will have to start adopting in India so that we become, we are, we are ahead of the curve. If we allow a party like the Congress and fail leaders like Rahul Gandhi and Chidambaram to, to have a say in the national economy, I am extremely concerned that we'll once again go backward and slide down, like we saw in the UPA government. This Gamandia Gatbandan of the Congress can only take us back to pitfalls and to the chalta hai attitude of the past. Prime Minister Narendra Modi believes in reform, he believes in performance, and that he believes will transform India to be a part of the world economy, to earn the trust of the world, so that we can be a part of the global growth story. Also, we've seen in the Independence Day speeches made by the leaders of different opposition parties, they're seeking to highlight uh, Manipur. We saw what Rahul Gandhi said in Parliament and outside, alleging that Manipur is being split into two. Uh, they also highlighted Haryana and alleged that, you know, uh, that you, you know, you've sprinkled kerosene as it were. That's the charge. So how do you respond to this charge? by the opposition, the mishand alleged mishandling of the situation in Manipur and the current situation in Haryana? Well, I think uh, the opposition, instead of showing sensitivity, particularly in an ethnic clash in Manipur, is trying to politicize, sensationalize, and actually create more problems for the administration in resolving the situation in Manipur. The reality is that Manipur has had difficult times in the past. In fact, when the opposition or the Congress was in government there, we have seen months and months of blockades, so many people uh, suffering and many losing their life on so many different occasions in the past. In fact, the Northeast as a whole has gone through very troubled times under the Congress. They believed in the divide and rule philosophy. Prime Minister Narendra Modi over the last nine years has brought a healing touch to the entire Northeast. In fact, large parts of the Northeast have been made peaceful. The Armed Forces Special Provisions Acts have been, Act has been removed. There's peace, prosperity, there's growth, there's economic stability. The people are seeing welfare measures reach the poorest of the poor. It is unfortunate that a court verdict given under very and very, very sad circumstances caused a misunderstanding amongst a certain section of the people of Manipur, and that led to this very unfortunate incident, set of incidents. The central government and the state government acted very, very fast and brought this situation under control. 
the situation is fast improving to normalcy. I hope the Congress party will not, for petty political gains, try to once again instigate or uh, create a fresh problem for the nation.